retrieved, this part will be replaced by the index value of 3. Because as we have uh, assumed that our user has clicked on the third question. So when the uh, expression is replaced by this value of 3, it's going to look at the ID when it moves on to the case statements. We have two case statements. One is looking at, uh, this is the first case statement and this is the third case statement. So the third element has the ID of C. The first uh, case statement has a value of A. So it won't match with this first uh, case statement and so the compiler will ignore this first case statement and so we can uh, close this off. Now again, the, it moves on to the third, uh, I mean the second case statement. So the compiler now sees that the third element has the ID, uh, the ID of C. So this ID matches with the second case's value and so it sees that it also has C. So you can see that when I highlight this part, the third element's ID inside the CF script also gets highlighted. So when it finds a match, it's going to retrieve the question's value in here, where do you live? It's going to retrieve that along with the answers value of Taka. And when it retrieves the question's value, it's setting or it's initializing an, a new variable of question that has the same name, perhaps. Uh, let's, um, it's uh, setting this new, uh, that's retrieved value of question inside the new variable of question. Now, this value of question contains where do you live? Again, similarly, it retrieves the answer's value of Taka. So when it retrieves that value, it's going to set that value to a new variable of answer. These variables are not same. This is a structure ID question. These are all structures, but these are variables as you can see clearly. So this question contains where do you live? This answer question is Taka. Now, because it already found a match, this third element is matching with this ID of C because we have already stored this ID uh, of C inside the third element. It's also going to ignore this default part, default case part, so we can close this off. So when this get uh, stored inside both of those question and answer, what we're uh, doing in here, our URL is now being updated with the new values. Our uh, URL has now been updated with the value of three, so we no longer have we no longer have the value uh, the default value of two. We now have the value of three for our URL questions. So when we have the value of three or the index value of three for the questions array, because our user requested that, we are going to show the third question along with the third answer. So that's what you see in here whenever you click the third question. We are showing, when we click onto this, it's retrieving the answer and the question. Uh, it's retrieving the answer and the question and it's showing that uh, uh, it's showing that on our browser. So this section, whenever we click this part, whenever we click this part, is triggering this output segment, CF output segment. So now, because our user requested the third uh, third element of the array, we are showing the qu third question along with the third answer. So inside the CF loop, I guess you remember what the CF loop is doing. It's just printing out all these questions, or it's just uh, looking at the array first, the array, we have started it from zero. Now I've talked about starting it from the index value of one. What happens when you start uh, from the index value of zero perhaps? So if you put up zero, it's, going, it's not going to match with your arrow length function. So what happens? Suppose let's change, uh, suppose let's change this. Let's make this zero. So now our two will become one and our three will become two. 
so we have started our index for the array from 0 so we have 0 1 and 2 but what happens when the array length function counts the elements stored inside your array it's not going to start the counting from 0 but perhaps it's going to start the counting from 1 so whenever it encounters the elements of the array it's going to see that you have three elements but our index starts from 0 so we have three in uh, we have two indexes 0 1 and 2 so we have two indexes so if we start from the index value of 0 we will uh, be have a will ha will be having a conflicting relationship with this two attribute because our array length is looking at three elements whereas we are looking at uh, two, uh, we, are, we are ending at the index of 2. So to eradicate the problem we need to subtract 1 from here. So now we get a match and uh, we get a match of 2. So this array element counts the elements inside this questions array so it finds that it has 3 elements. So 3 minus 1 makes it 2 so this matches with our index of 2. So you don't need to uh, do all the sub uh, subtraction you just simply can follow along by using uh, the index value of 1 so that was all about this uh, that was all about this uh, last segment of this videos uh, vi uh, chapter so if you like my videos please comment below like my vid videos and please subscribe to my channel i'll be posting more videos very soon and please please subscribe and if you have any sort of question place them on the command section if you want to personally contact me i have an email address for the business inquiries you can uh, send me any of your queries i'll try to answer them and happy coding and salam